Hey everyone, Nurse Mike here from SimpleNursing.com. Today we're making IV fluids simple, isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions, and when to use them on the floor and on the NCLEX. So for all my Simple Nursing members, grab your study guides in the membership area to help this fluid knowledge stick like sailing. Let's flow right into it and get started. Hey guys, Mike Linares here, and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Today we're talking about isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic solutions. They're kind of like the three little bears, or the three little hippos. One is too much, one is too little, and one is just right. So right now, let's break down these IV fluids using our super cute hippopotamus method. Alright guys, first we have hypotonic fluids, which we call hippotonic fluid. Because fluid goes into the cell, making the cell swell, making it big and puffed up and swollen, just like a big hippo. So what are hypotonic fluids? Well, they're just solutions containing a lower concentration of salt or solute than ICF, or basically fluid inside the cell. They are basically diluted fluids having less salt and more water than your body fluids. So the simplest way to remember this is hippos love water, and hippotonic fluids are filled with water. Hypotonic fluids have a lower osmolality, basically a less concentration than body fluids, because all of that water dilutes their concentration. Now hippos are massive and they eat a lot because they're very hungry, hungry hippos. And this is simple to remember hypotonic solutions in a way that they're usually half, one-third, or even one-fourth of normal saline. So guys, write this down. This is a list of hypotonic fluids. Half NS, or 45% NaCl, sodium chloride. One-fourth NS, or 20% sodium chloride. One-third NS, or basically 0.33% of sodium chloride. And 2.5% dextrose in water, as well as D5W. So caution, let's slow this down real quick, because D5W is a very unique solution and may be both isotonic as well as hypotonic, but never hypertonic. So please stop what you're doing and listen up real quick. Now D5W is isotonic in the bag and hypotonic in the body. Now before you go like OMG, just understand that sugar is the big culprit here. Inside the bag, the sugar is thick and floating around in there. But once inside the body, the sugar's eaten up by all the cells in your body. And all that's left is our good old-fashioned hypotonic fluids. Now let's write down these very important nursing considerations with hypotonic fluids. So first things first, never use hypotonics with ICP patients. It will increase their intracranial pressure and cause brain swelling. Also, any solution with dextrose, which is just fancy words for sugar, is never used for diabetic patients with hyperglycemia problems, basically high blood sugar problems. Once again, dextrose is sugar and will make more sugar in the body. Okay, so what is the function of hypotonic solutions and why do we use them in people? Well, their function is used mainly to replace fluid inside the cell, the ICF, intracellular fluid and used for conditions that cause cellular dehydration. So guys, please slow it down and write that down. Cellular dehydration is when your cells are thirsty. So for example, cellular dehydration happens with hypernatremia, basically too much salty sodium in the body. All that salt in the blood adds up and piles up in the bloodstream and sucks out all that fluid inside the cell to outside the cell causing those skinny cells to shrink even more, known as cellular dehydration. Now condition number two, HHNS, which is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketonic state. Mike, watch your language. Oh, sorry. Also called HHS for short, which is basically a type two diabetic disorder with uncontrolled high blood sugar. All that super thick blood sugar concentration makes the cells dehydrated by drawing fluid out of the cell. Now caution, again, do not use D5W. The D is dextrose and dextrose is sugar. Now condition number three, DKA, diabetic ketone acidosis. Very similar to HHS, but this time it happens to type one diabetics. It involves burning ketones or protein molecules instead of glucose sugar as a primary source of energy. But essentially the same thing happens here. 
super thick, syrupy, sugary blood. And this makes cells dehydrated by drawing fluid outside the cells and making cells thirsty. But again, caution, don't use solutions with dextrose and sugar, guys. Mmm, them cells are thirsty. Okay, guys, that's enough with the thirsty jokes, okay? All right, so let's talk about some key nursing interventions to keep in mind when using hypotonic solutions. So guys, please write this down. These are priority nursing considerations for hypotonic. They're never given for ICP patients. We don't infuse too rapidly. You want to infuse slowly. And we also watch out for hypovolemia signs and symptoms. Since hypotonic solutions draw more fluid into the cells from its surroundings, we never give hypotonic solutions to patients with ICP, intracranial pressure. Because just basically think about this, it's gonna increase the intracranial pressure, or fancy words for increase the brain swelling leading to brain damage. So all hypotonic solutions should be administered slowly to prevent this cellular edema, which is a key word for the NCLEX. Now, the last nursing consideration is excessive infusions of hypotonic solutions can lead to a fluid depletion inside the blood vessels, leading to a condition called hypovolemia, basically low fluid in the body. Here are some signs and symptoms for hypovolemia, low volume of fluid. Tachycardia is usually one of the first signs we see, but also decreased blood pressure, cellular edema, as well as cell damage. So also be cautious with diagnoses like liver disease and trauma and burn. And once again, to wrap it up, no hypotonics for ICP patients. We infuse very slowly and we watch out for signs and symptoms of hypovolemia, low volume of fluid. Get a full breakdown of what you need to pass the NCLEX with our NCLEX review lecture series and live cram sessions led by myself and industry experts. Next is our hypertonic fluid. The simplest way to remember this is to think of a hyper person. Now we all know that one person in our life that's super high energy, super hyper, and always peppy, bouncing off the walls and super skinny, super enviously thin, right? Because you have all that fluid escaping from inside the cell to outside, making those cells skinny and flat. Now what is a hypertonic solution? It's a solution containing higher concentration of salt or solute than our ICF, fluid inside the cell. They're basically very thick concentrated fluids inside the IV bag, thick like mud. Now, hypertonics have more salt and less water, so they're more thick solutions having a higher osmolality, or basically higher concentration. This means hypertonic solutions will have higher osmotic pressure, basically meaning they're pulling fluids toward themselves, kind of like a magnet, pulling that fluid out of the cell, making them very skinny. Or in fancy terms, pulling fluid out from inside the cell, the ICF, to outside the cell, the ECF, causing the cells to shrink by osmosis. Because where there is high salt, water gets pulled there to equalize the osmolarity and keep it just right for homeostasis. So here's a little memory trick to help you remember hypertonic solutions. These solutions have numbers like three, five, and 10. So it's easy to remember those three numbers, the three, the five, and the 10. Hypertonic fluid examples are 3% normal saline, 5% normal saline, D10W, D5W half an S, D5LR, lactated ringers, and D50W. So what is the function of these solutions and why do we use them in our patients? Well, the main function is to draw fluids out of the cell into the vascular spaces, basically inside the bloodstream. We use them for hypovolemic patients with low fluid, heat-related disorders like heat exhaustion, and even peritonitis, an inflammation of the peritoneal cavity of the abdomen right here. So let's talk about some key nursing interventions to keep in mind when using hypertonic solutions. Now guys, priority nursing considerations here, so write these down. Infuse slowly, not too rapidly like a big bolus. If administered rapidly or in large quantities, hypertonic solutions may cause a big massive fluid shift and overwhelm extracellular fluids. So you'll basically have all this fluid outside the cells. Well, why is this a big problem? Well, this can domino into an effect like cellular dehydration and even a bigger problem like fluid volume overload. So here are some signs and symptoms for fluid volume overload to watch out for. Big bounding pulses, 
high blood pressure, JVD, basically jugular vein distension in the neck, crackles in the lungs, basically fluid in the lungs, and possible edema. So please be cautious when administering this fluid. Finally, let's talk about isotonic fluids. These are my favorite because it's iso perfect. Not too big, not too skinny, they're just so perfect, causing no fluid shifts. Now the medical definition to be all fancy is, isotonic fluids are equal in solute concentration of normal human blood. They have equal osmotic pressure, so there is no fluid shift. So fluid remains intravascularly, inside the blood vessel. And they don't cause any fluid shift because the osmotic pressure is the same both inside and outside the cell, so it's iso-perfect. It has a perfect balance, not causing any fluid shifts and no problems. It's just perfect like you are. You don't need to change. You don't need to gain. You don't need to lose. It's just so perfect. Now, as mentioned before, isotonic solutions have the same consistency as normal human blood cells, and thus very little osmosis, or basically the moving of fluids occurs. Since they're just like human cells, they have the same osmolality as body fluids. So here's a list of isotonic solutions you may run into, so write these down, guys. So 0.9% normal saline, or LR, lactated ringers, contain potassium. So guys, be cautious with your renally impaired patients. This could cause hyperkalemia, basically too much potassium. Secondly, no liver impaired patients. The liver cannot metabolize lactate when it's impaired. So guys, don't administer to patients with cirrhosis or even hepatitis or any other liver conditions. Now, as said before, with our hypotonic fluids, D5W is isotonic in the bag and hypotonic in the body. Now, before you go like, OMG, just please understand that sugar is the culprit here. Inside the bag, sugar is thick and floated in there. But inside the body, sugar's eaten up and metabolized by the cells, and all that's left is good old hypotonic. So once again, it's isotonic in the bag and hypotonic in the body. So to wrap this up, what are the functions of hypotonic solutions and why do we use them in people? Now the main function is used mainly to add fluid to the intravascular spaces inside the blood vessels rehydrate the body. They just add fluids into the blood vessels to increase blood volume. So we put it into the blood vessels and it just basically stays there. So isotonics are usually used for fainting or syncope, usually found in orthostatic hypotension or basically low blood pressure when standing, which is commonly a dehydration problem. But also we use it with traumas with acute blood loss like gunshot wounds or stabbings or other exciting hemorrhages. In this case, we give isotonics as a bolus, meaning a rapid infusion. Now a bolus is that rapid, wide open, no need for IV pump type of fluid delivery. It's kind of like chugging down a water really fast. Now, isotonics are also used for blood transfusions, as well as said before, dehydrated patients. Okay, so let's talk about some key nursing interventions to keep in mind when using isotonics. So since these fluids expand in the intravascular space, patients with hypertension or high blood pressure, as well as heart failure, should be carefully monitored for volume overload. So these signs and symptoms are bounding pulses, high blood pressure, AVD like jugular vein distension, crackles in the lungs that just basically fluid in the lungs, and possible edema. Thanks for watching. Did you know you can unlock beautifully handcrafted study guides, packed with key points and memory tricks from all our videos? Plus, you'll get access to over 1,200 exclusive videos not on YouTube, all neatly organized by nursing school topic to make that complex nursing knowledge actually stick. You'll also gain thousands of practice questions written by current professors and actual NCLEX writers. So for access to all this and more, click right up here or visit simplenursing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy studying, and we'll see you in the next videos.